it was quiet and just out of nowhere just something just like whoa, 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 just like like a what freaking like king kong or something's over there <laughs> Bodega is a guide and a storyteller, escorting you through the night, lighting the way, warding off thieves, ghosts, demons, and other oddities. Along the journey, his companions would often share with him the most curious of stories that he'd record in his codex. Perhaps you just might find yourself traveling with the Codega and sharing one of yours. All right, good evening, and welcome to Codega's Codex of Curiosities. Today, tonight, this morning, this evening, we're going to have a great guest on named Jacob Ruckman. But before we get there, just some general housekeeping to take care of. Click that like. Yeah. If you're new here, subscribe and have the bell hit for notifications to stay up to date on all the new content. All right, that was pretty fast. Um, also, you know, if you really do like this show, if it's something that you're interested in, or if you want to see more of something, send me an email, codexofcuriosities at gmail.com, and let me know what you're interested in or what you're not interested in. I'm open to just about anything. We'll have everything from UFOs, Dogman, Bigfoot, uh, alien, abduct abductions, ghosts, uh, what... Uh, Glitches in the Matrix, you know, time loss, uh, portals, Nephilim, everything. And just wait, we have some great guests coming up, including today's guest, Jacob Ruckman. And I want to thank him as well for stepping in as we had a previous guest who just didn't show up. Not a big deal. It happens in this industry. So luckily, uh, Jacob was able to step up. Also, make sure you share the show. It really helps if you're sharing it to your friends, your neighbors, your coworkers, your Brothers, your sisters, your enemies, all the above. Doesn't matter. Just share the show. All right. And without that, with all that taken care of, I'm going to bring on Jacob. All right, Jacob, welcome to Codega's Codex of Curiosities. What's up, bro? <laughs> What's up, Jacob? I'm glad that you're uh, able to make it uh, at such short notice. You know, as I send you, I sent you a message, and you're like. Yep, I can do this. So that was fantastic. You really helped me out of a bind. And we did have your your interview scheduled. I think I scheduled that yesterday for, you know, like a month and a half out. But, well, things right. happen. And here you are. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I was just sitting on the couch watching YouTube videos. So. <laughs> as you as you do, as you do on a Friday. <laughs> as you're recovering from putting in a hard days uh, or hard, hard weeks work. Yep. Excellent. So why don't you tell our listeners just a little bit about yourself and viewers? All right. Well, growing up my whole life here in Southern Indiana and you know, it's a, it's a pretty wild place really. <laughs> Whenever you, you know, you, when you open your mind to it all, I've kind of, oh, you know, just that. always kind of was just like, you know, what was that? Or, you know, just, I don't know. Of, of, <laughs> of, of, of course, of course. No, it, it, exactly, exactly. And you know, are you? Did you grow up in the city, or did you grow out? Uh, did you grow up uh, out in an acreage, or out in a farm, or something like that? Uh, just out in the middle of nowhere, pretty much. I mean, there's farms all around me, but you know, my dad was a mechanic and stuff like that. Mom didn't work. I mean, just stayed at home, went to school, come home, and you know, normal normal teenager stuff, and. You know, as you know, as a kid too, all growing up, all that stuff. Oh, awesome, awesome! Yeah, I, I grew up on a small acreage, uh, like out in the 
<laughs> out in the middle of nowhere, you some would say at, at times, you know, and uh, I, I, I loved it, you know, just we didn't have much for TV, but, you know, you you had fun going outside and exploring. And, and how about yourself? Oh, yeah, for sure. Uh, you know, all growing up as, you know, from being I mean, I can remember back to before I even started school, you know, I mean, I'm just guessing here, probably around three years old, four years old. And uh, mom just pushing me out the door, putting a, a jar of Kool-Aid out there, you know, like an old peanut butter jar. With some, yeah. You know, we, 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 we didn't have much money growing up, you know. And uh, so, yeah, she just pushed me out the door and, you know, she'd be on the phone all day with her girlfriends or watching soap operas. And I'd just be outside flipping over stuff, looking for snakes and, you know, whatever I could find. <laughs> and frogs. There's a little creek next to mom and dad's, which, yeah, there's a a little bit of a something that goes along with that creek down there that I had an experience in the creek down there once before it was pretty interesting but all, all right why don't well why don't we just jump right into it tell us a little bit about the creek you know I have some I have some ideas and heard a lot of uh stories when people talk about moving waterways you know like rivers creeks streams there's always yeah. something that seems to be a little uh strange that happens around there but why don't you tell us your story right it's uh it's just a, a spring that comes out, just comes out of the hillside. And it's probably about, uh, I don't know, about two and a half foot, three foot wide. And it's got some real deep spots in it and some bends. And it goes all the way down to where my dad's well house is. He has a well that pumps his water to his house. And it just turns into a, a swamp pretty much after that, just cattails and weeds and blackberry bushes and stuff like that. But I always played in that creek growing up. Uh, catching crawled ads and frogs and snakes and stuff like that. But, and uh, this particular time that I remember, it was, uh, well, I mean, all growing up, I always felt like there was something there. Okay. And at my, you know, my parents' house is, to this day, it's haunted. My dad actually had something happen recently and it freaked him out really bad. I'll tell you about it later. But uh, anyway, <laughs> yeah, you're going to have to, you're going to have to, you're leaving us <laughs> on a cliffhanger on that one. <laughs> and uh, I, uh, I always felt like there was a light just like right over my shoulder. It's like right behind me. I like it was there and I always talked to it. I, I remember it. I mean, and I was, you know, like I said, like three, four years old. But by this time, I was probably, I mean, this probably don't have nothing to do with that. But, you know, I was, I don't know, probably seven, eight years old at this point. And I'm down and there's a little bend there and there's a tree. It's a, uh, a sycamore tree and it grows kind of like in a, a U shape. And it's got okay. two trees that shoot up and it's got the side over here and it's got a big hole in it, the side of it. Well, anyway, it's a, it's a, a bend. So it's deeper right there. It's about, it used to be about two, three foot deep. And I never really, uh, I ain't been down there in a long time and looked at it, but, but anyways, I was there messing with it and I'm just like, look down and there is a giant red snake down there. And I mean, it's like the girth of like a Python, you know, not a giant one, but a, I mean, it's probably big around as a baseball bat or so. Wow. And it had okay. a big, big old head on it. But I mean, it was r just dark red. And I mean, yeah, just I before you up, there, have you, have you ever seen a dark red snake like that before? No. And I mean, I've looked and I mean, I'm, I know a lot about reptiles and stuff. I've kept them my whole life. I mean, I've, yeah. we've got, se we got several snakes for pets now, me and my daughter, <laughs> but uh, no, I've never seen anything. There's, I've never seen anything in the whole world that, that looked like this. And, but what was weird about it, it was like slithering, like it was swimming in the water, but it was submerged completely. But it was just like, it was just stuck there. And it was just, just swimming back and forth and it never went anywhere. And I mean, it, it freaked me out and I jumped the Creek and I ran back to the house. And I mean, it was probably, I mean, it, it was probably a good, three foot long, four foot long, and, you know, big girthy snake. I mean, it, I mean, it had a, a hand, a head on it, probably bigger than your hand. Wow. And, but it, it didn't really look real. It kind of looked kind of anima animated. I mean, this is 
over 30 years ago. Of course, of course, yeah. <laughs> but but it, I mean, it didn't I mean, feel it, like it, 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 sorry, it, it, it always didn't feel like it's it always stuck with well. me. It didn't yeah, feel like I mean, it belonged kind of thing in this, uh, in this reality almost in a way. Yeah. I mean, it, it was pretty animated. Yeah. I mean, it looked real, it looked realistic, but it was like fake at the same time. Mm-hmm. I don't know. It was just yeah. kind of weird. I just figured I'd, that's just kind of the first thing that popped in my head as we were just starting out talking about me growing no. up. My, but of, of uh, course, of course I find that fascinating. Cause like, that's not the first time that I've heard. I'm not saying a snake, but there's a lot of people who talk about things that just don't feel right. You know, they're they're just it's like things are animated, but they're you know, it's not like how we move in reality. It's like they're moving at a different frame rate than we are. Um, and it's kind of like like kind of jumpy almost right. in a way or just not not smooth, not normal, you know, like like. Yeah, I, I understand exactly what you're saying. I I, I believe Daryl Denton was talking about something like that uh, when we did a live with him. Yeah. But yeah, that is fascinating. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, for for sure. I mean, it was like it was like like it was simulated there, and it was just like just stuck there doing its thing. And I mean, it wasn't going anywhere in the water. I mean, the water flows, but it's slow. I mean, it's mm-hmm. just. I mean, it's not moving fast like a you know a quick little creek or anything. I mean. Yep. It's just slow, slow moving water. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. That, cool. that was always, always something stuck with me in, in my childhood. And, and, uh, and I got a question about this light. So you, you said you, around the age of three or four, you saw like, not necessarily saw, but maybe out of the corner of your eye or, or felt this, yeah. this light following you constantly. Yeah. Well, not constantly, mm-hmm. but it was there the majority of the time. And, Do you have any I mean, guess? Any guess on what it is or what it was? I'm not sure. You know, I know some people talk about guardian angels and yep. you know spirits, this and ghosts, that. What? I, I have no idea. I mean, it, as far as I know, I used to talk to it all. I know I talked to it all the time. I, I remember it, and but I don't ever remember it communicating back in any way i don't think Mm -hmm. but but yeah i mean it was always there with me though i mean i felt like there's just someone right there right behind me Mm -hmm. and 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 comforting like a comforting feeling like if you're talking to it i'm assuming it's like a yeah 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 i mean it yeah it was like it was my best bud or something i'm i don't know it's kind of weird wow it's interesting it's 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 interesting Sorry, I'm just having a, a little bit of an issue with my camera. Hopefully, it finishes adjusting, and uh, who knows? We'll see. Yeah. <laughs> this yeah, is an I, added I, was, effect. I don't know. It's like burp, burp, burp. It's, it's changing the yeah. uh, the auto ex- exposure, but hopefully, it changes. Hopefully, it stops. Yeah. Um, yeah I'm, I'm sorry. I have I have to do this in my car. I mean, I, I don't have a laptop or. <laughs> no, you know, I got no. four four children in the house that, and the big That's dog fine. in there, and it'd have been a it, nightmare trying to do it in the house. <laughs> not a problem. Not a not a problem. Yeah, it seems like the camera has has settled out here for me. Um, no, and no worries. Okay, so yeah. let's let's move on from that then. Um, t- you know, you had messaged me and told me that you had some uh, some Bigfoot encounters or or something of the sorts. Why don't you? Why don't we jump uh, into that? Yeah, more than I like. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I you know, as a you know, my dad always worked all the time, so mm-hmm. I mean occasionally we go do something on the, the weekends we go he well anyways we go to the creek or go fishing or do something like that and uh you know pretty much i was up to entertaining myself i didn't have any i had an older sibling it was a sister you know she yep. had no interest of in playing with little brother and uh you know so i picked up hunting because you know a lot of the other redneck boys at school i mean that's that's what we we wanted to shoot big bucks and you know, shoot big tom turkeys and all that stuff. So, I mean, I kind of went towards those guys because I kind of fit in with them. And uh, so, you know, I hunted all the time and, uh, you know, in season. And, uh, yeah. you know, my par- my parents would let me skip school and stuff like that. And I'd go hunt. And, you know, there's several times, you know, and I, I never thought nothing about it. Like, you know, you hear the big sticks break back in the mm-hmm. woods and stuff like that you know, he, and you know you just hear just like you, there's something coming or something and you just never see nothing 
you know, sometimes, you know, it's a squirrel, you know, a squirrel sounds like an elephant coming through the woods, you know, <laughs> you know, a little, little three pound little tree rat, you know, yeah. coming down there just sounds like he's tearing the whole place up. But, uh, you know, I mean, there's just those things and stuff like, yeah, I always heard, just never really thought much of, maybe there's a big deer coming or something. No, nothing. And as I got a little older, one of my buddies, his dad would, uh, let me hunt in his tree stand on the, it was a, I don't know, probably it was over a hundred acres. I mean, it's just right down the road from me. It's not far. And, uh, I was, I went up through the, the woods there and this happened to me several times. I would pull off the road. You pull into a hay field. It's a small one. It's only a couple acres. Yep. You go around a corner, you go into another big hay field and you go and it's several acres and I pull back in the back corner and there's an old skitter trail where they drug logs out of the woods. And, uh, okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so I would, uh, I'd walk up that skitter trail all the way to the top and then it would go into a four wheeler trail off the side of it, off the side of a cornfield. And, uh, uh, my buddy's uh, dad's tree stand was right over there and he'd let me hunt through the week in his stand and he'd hunt it in the weekend. And, uh, I was, uh, I parked my little car down there yep. and I started heading up, heading up at that hill hillside. And back then I thought it was coyotes cause it was, uh, it just a, a sound like, Ooh, like that. And okay. Okay. I, so, so as I'm walking up there, I mean, it's right off to the side of me on the right side makes that sound. I'm just walking up there with a bow. I didn't have a pistol or nothing. I was just, broke teenage boy i was just lucky to have a bow and uh, and then it would make another noise on the left side of me and just as i kept going up it would be on either side several and as i i got older you know i started listening you know, i've had several other experiences but now i listen to sasquatch chronicles and bigfoot yep. crossroads and all that stuff and it just got super interested and after having things and i was like well maybe i need to look into this a little more well it's actually the sound I was hearing is like a barred owl. Okay. Okay. And, and there is lots of barred owls around here, yeah. uh, especially down by the lakes and stuff like that. I hear them all the time when we catfish. But, uh, I mean, these were on the ground real close to me and way louder <laughs> than, a, than a, a barred owl. Yep. And, I, I always just thought it was coyotes making like contact calls to each other. So I don't know why the hell that was in my mind, okay. but <laughs> yeah, you know, it freaked me out. You know, I was like shaking like a leaf walking up that trail. And I get all the way up there. I get in the tree stand and yep. you know, I, I hear, I hear all the morning traffic. The road is, I don't know, hundred, 150 yards, maybe give or take something like that back behind me. I can hear all the morning traffic, people going to work, school buses going through. Cause you know, I skip school. And after all that kind of calms down, I'm sitting there and the sun, the sun, it's getting where I can see pretty good. And it's like, look around, you know, nothing's happening. No noises at all. Nothing. Sun finally comes up. I mean, I don't remember exact, I mean, exactly what time it was, but I mean, if I could guess it was probably around eight or nine o'clock in the morning. Okay. And, uh, from where I was sitting in a tree stand, the four wheeler trail goes right on past me and it just kind of drops down a little ravine and then comes back up over on another hillside. And there's a big patch of briar bushes down there and something down there just out of nowhere. I mean, it, it was quiet. I mean, I don't remember if it was like not a cricket making a sound, you know, like a lot of people say, I mean, I don't remember, but yeah. it was quiet. And just out of nowhere, just something just like, whoa, 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 just like, like a what freaking like King Kong or something's over there. <laughs> yeah. 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 It, that's exactly. What, yes. <laughs> and wow. I was like, you know, I was like, what the hell was that? And I'm just shaking like a leaf. You know, I'm, I think I was probably around 16, maybe 16 years old or so, 17 at the most at that time because i was driving and yep. uh <laughs> i was just like what the hell and i mean i sat there for a long time and i mean there's nothing made a sound i mean i can't remember exactly how long i sat there but i mean i know it was way over an hour yeah and nothing ever made another sound 
never heard a footstep, nothing. And the crazy thing is, the first thing that came to my mind was, I don't know if it was like the year prior or so, I was going to town with my mom. And this is actually right back behind my property from where I'm sitting right now, not too far okay. down. We got the big metal power lines that run through. And it actually runs all the way down to my mom and dad's. I only live like four miles from my mom and dad's. I mean, don't go, never left, <laughs> didn't get far away from home. Didn't get too far. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But uh, we got the big giant freaking uh, power lines that are, you know, they're like, 250 feet tall or so yep and they're huge i mean they sound like bacon frying in the skillet you get underneath of them they're crackling and popping yep. and uh well they where the the forest is and stuff you know there's cuts through there where they you know they keep it cut and keep it trimmed and stuff and i was driving through there or my mom was driving and i was in the passenger seat and we came up around the corner right down here past where i live now and up through that cut there was a humongous black cat, huge. And it really? had its tail up and yeah, it had its tail up in there, you know, just doing its little thing, like, you know, like a house cat does, like whenever yep. it's, yep. you know, happy or whatever. But I mean, you know, I've are been there, to the circus. Are, are there any, are there any black cats like that in the area? Like, is that a like Jaguars no. or anything like that? Or? No. no, this is Indiana, man. <laughs> unless <laughs> unless one's escaped or something. I mean, pe people do see mountain lions out here. And I, I do know somebody personally that has caught a small mountain lion on a, on a trail cam, probably about okay. a, a 40, 50 pound cat, maybe at the most. Yeah. Still nothing I would want to run into, but uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the first thing that came to my mind was that cat. But I mean, like I, I was going to say, uh, you know, I've been to the circus. I used to take my kids to the circus. I, I don't do it anymore. But uh, the the big lions that they have in there and stuff. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, this thing was just as big as a female African lion. I mean, wow. huge. Like huge. Yeah. I mean, it's like there's there's no way you could have doubted this as – a, a big black labrador or a big coon yeah. dog or something you know i mean it, it's just not what it was i mean you can you can see the you know the ass end of the cat and they, you know i mean it, it was a freaking big cat <laughs> yeah no it, it, exactly yeah. we so we yeah. uh um episode seven of the lost frequency we interviewed uh seth carden and he talked about seeing a very large black cat as well very similar to what you're saying and he described it he said that he looked it looked into it and there's it's called the wampus beast. So something, <laughs> something for you to take a look at, you know, yeah, that's funny. You say that, you know, my little brother, I mean, he's deceased now, but you know, mm -hmm. he had an accident, but, uh, he, uh, he used to have a little Ford, uh, ah, oh, damn it. Escort a little five speed, okay. five speed Ford Escort. And it was pink and he had it on his back windshield. It said wampus cat on it. Really? That's yeah. a, that's pretty uh, coincidental there. It, it, I, I never yeah. even knew what the hell it meant. I mean, I thought it was just some stupid redneck term or something that I didn't know, you know, younger kids. <laughs> yeah, of, of course, yeah. of course. You know, it's, it's, oh, it sounds cool, but you don't really know what it is. Uh, yeah, yeah, this is, and this is something I've never heard of before prior to Seth there talking about it. And he had seen it and well, I, for the life of me, can't remember if it was like in Kentucky or something like that where he had seen it. I don't yeah. know. Yeah, yeah. I, I've heard other stories on podcasts about the big black cats, but uh, yeah, I live I live here in you know southern Indiana. I mean, I live out in the middle of nowhere, so I'm not really like the town, but I'm in between a couple of towns, and I'm closest to a town called Pekin, and it's it's always been a a thing. It's went around a rumor called the Pekin Panther. You know, a lot of people have seen this black cat, and uh, I've actually I talked to uh an old farmer used to come out here and uh bush hog the back of my field back here just to to keep it cut down he'd come yep. out once a year and cut it at the end of summer and i was talking to him about it and uh, well just because there's some weird shit that goes on here at my house that's how i got the place lit up out here now because, because of it but uh yeah uh, i was talking mm -hmm. to him about it I was like, you know i was like there's some weird stuff that goes on here around my house and yep. uh I was like, I was just curious. I said, I, you know, I told him about the, the black cat I seen. He's like, you know what? He has a farm down the road and he has, 
you know, several hundred cow on the, the property, head of cow uh, or cattle, however you want to say it. Uh, no, I'm rambling on pretty fast. I'm sorry. No, no, no. <laughs> that's no, you're doing fantastic. You're uh, doing fantastic. So what is he saying about these cattle? Well, uh, he used to rent this little trailer up at the top of the hill. I mean, uh, and uh, we used to shoot coyotes up there uh, back in the day. And, uh, but anyways, I was well, he was talking to him. And he said uh, that girl that lived rented that trailer from him up there uh, kept telling him that she kept hearing something screaming back here. And so he was like, well, you know, that's kind of weird. And he's looking around out back here and stuff. And he thought they were just big dog prints. But yep. I mean, I guess they were cat prints. Cause it wasn't even a couple of days later, he had a calf that got killed up there and he decided he was going to track it down. I mean, I don't know if the story's true or not, but he was telling me, I mean, it, it was like a hundred degrees that day. I was back here on my lawnmower. <laughs> I stopped and talked to him while he's brush hogging. Yeah, yeah. He's just sweat pouring off of him. You know, he's got no junkie tractor, no AC with a, it had a cab on it, but you know, he, he was cooking in there and he stopped and he's, just tell me about that and he said he tracked them uh, i mean it was a couple miles he tracked them through the wood i don't know how the hell you track a, a big cat like that but he yeah. said he did and he caught up to them and i don't remember what kind of rifle he had i mean it was a big badass rifle i know shoot a long ways and apparently there was two of them and he said he shot that one and he said he knew he, he knew he hit it. He said he was about 100 yards or I can't remember exactly now, but he wasn't super far, but he was far. Yeah. And he, he said he hit that one. He said he's seen the ripple go through its fur. So he knew he hit it. Yeah. And he said, uh, I don't know if it was that following evening or if it was the next day, but he said there were several black SUVs down there and there was a couple of uh, DNR vehicles down there, too really really wow so yeah that's and, a little uh, suspicious there like it's it why does that always seem to happen whenever there's these unexplained uh creatures creatures there's always i don't you know, know like they always seem to show up it's like if they're tracking them if they have a way to track them you know if there's some sort of anomaly that they are able to lock on to i don't know well uh not to skip ahead but i mean i yeah yeah my my buddy that I had a Sasquatch experience with down at a lake we, we fish at and uh there's a house just down the road from there mm -hmm. and the whole place is lit up. You know, me and my buddy Tim, we've always been like, you know, that guy knows something. You know, there's something going on. He's got that place lit up because you know, we had an experience there. I said, I mean, that guy knows his freaking Bigfoot down here, so yeah. Oh, I'd love to just stop and talk to him, but you know, I mean, we're out in the middle of nowhere, you know, you stop at somebody's house, they might tell you to get the hell out of here, come on in, or they might put a gun in your face. I mean, you never know. And, and uh, so you usually just don't pull up in somebody's driveway and say, Hey, why you got all these, why you got all these <laughs> lights on out here, man? I yeah. mean, you can see the whole hillside behind your house. But anyways, he, uh, one of his buddies was having a, a metal roof put on his house. And he started mm -hmm. talking to this guy down there while he was down there visiting. Uh, this guy was working and it ended up being the guy that owns that house. <laughs> okay. Okay. And, cool. And so he asked him, he said, the guy just like got real weird, real weird, real quick. Like he didn't want to, he didn't want to talk about it. And he's like, dude, he's like, look, me and my buddy seen the Sasquatch down there. We know there's Sasquatch down there. And he's like, yeah, he's like, I'm, I'm pretty sure there is. But he said, that ain't the reason why I got the place lit up. He's like, there's mountain lions back here. And he's like, I seen one stalking one of my kids. And he's like, so I went and grabbed the rifle real quick and went out there. And he's like, I freaking killed it. And he's okay. like, I drug it up, you know, drug it up back over the backside of his property. Or it ran off. or so I, I don't remember exactly on that part. But like you were saying a second ago. This always happens. The next freaking day, DNR shows up at his house and they're wanting to walk through his property for for some reason to get to the other side. 
And he was just like, no, he's like, you got, there ain't no reason for you all to come through my property. You got all this land over here, go over there and walk around. You know, he's being a dick about it, I guess. But, but, <laughs> but you know, I, 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 I you're think not, he's, you're not, I think you're he's not well, supposed to uh, kill him. Too. Yes. Yes. Yeah. But, but I mean, I tell you what, I mean, if there's one out here looking at, at any of my dogs I got or looking at my kids for sure. Yeah, I mean, I'm gonna, I'm gonna. Put, you're you're put gonna, it down. you're gonna make a decision. You're gonna make it. <laughs> oh you're yeah. gonna make a decision. My family. Or... Actually, actually, probably if I just seen one, I would. Just, I'd, no, <laughs> I wouldn't yeah. even give it a chance to. <laughs> no, I don't like I big cats. I they scare me to death. <laughs> like I said, I don't go to the circus anymore. Yeah, them, them big bastards give me uh, anxiety like you wouldn't believe. Their eyes are so big, <laughs> they freak right. me out, dude. And they're just all the animals are mistreated so bad in the circuses and stuff like that. So that's why I just I don't don't support them. <laughs> no, hey, f fair enough. Fair I love enough. I, I love animals. I mean, I, I hate to bash on circuses. If you like circuses, go to the circus. Not me yeah. or my kids. <laughs> okay, all right. Well, that's that's that story, you know. And whenever it comes back to you know, whenever I was in that tree stand, you know, I heard the big sound like a big gorilla in the bushes over there barking mm -hmm. at me i know i'm all over the place but <laughs> no no that, that's all right but, uh, that's all right uh, it's, it, it, hey it's interesting but, everything you're telling is is super uh, fascinating and interesting but you know when i was sitting there in that stand with my little bow just shaking because i heard that noise that i mean that's the first thing that popped in my head was that big black cat going through the weeds with its mm -hmm. tail up in the air but you know, I was 16, 17 years old, probably somewhere around there. And, you know, big cats don't make gorilla sounds or monkey sound, whatever you want to call it. So, I mean, I really don't know what the hell that was. But that's the very first thing other than just hearing, you know, sticks breaking or, yep. you know, shit like that going on out in the out in the distance. And, I mean, I'll never forget it. And, you know, now, I mean, in my opinion... I, I'm pretty sure. I mean, that is a, a freaking Bigfoot. Yeah, you know, I don't even think a person could have been that loud. Yes. And, you know, and even growing up, you know, I've my dad was always big into watching the show sightings with the UFOs okay. and uh, and yeah. you know all that stuff. And you know, they always had the Patterson Gimlin film on there. And you know, I was always like, man, I was like, that thing's freaking real. But you know, at least it's way the hell over there. It ain't it ain't our problem. <laughs> like, never I'm you safe. never I'm would safe. never would think. Yeah. I mean, never would think that, you know, that you know, living here in Indiana, there'd be freaking Bigfoot. <laughs> but <laughs> but I tell you, I promise you there are. <laughs> let's get into I, it uh, then. Let let's hear your uh your tales. Well, what kind of made me a believer was when we were down at the Ohio River. Do you know where Louisville, Kentucky is? I don't. I'm being Canadian, I don't <laughs> yeah, know. I know, I know, yeah, yeah, I know you're <laughs> okay. Well, anyway, they have one of like the, the biggest firework displays in the in the United States, I believe. It's called oh, wow. Thunder Over Louisville. They shut the bridges down off the interstate that go across the river and they shoot bajillion dollars worth of fucking fireworks off off it and uh, well anyways i fished down there for big catfish down there in the mm -hmm. river and uh well how it starts out is i got this uh old acquaintance that you know i, I knew him from working at the sawmill uh several years ago and uh he used to bug me on Facebook because I'd post pictures of these big giant catfish I'd be catching down there. And he'd start bugging me. Man, I want to catch one of them big old fish. I mean, he's he's caught some decent fish, but he, ain't, he never did catch any big monsters. And I was like, well, I was like, he just kept bugging me and bugging me, you know. And I'm not big on hanging out with new people and stuff like that. And I got a couple close buds I'm close with and, you know, I don't really care to – to hang out and make new friends, I don't guess. <laughs> but uh, not to be a jerk, but I mean that's just kind of the way. No, I am. no, th th that's and, way, uh, the way many people are. You know, it's kind of like you you're set. You know, I I've got some good friends, and why do I need to uh, you know 
I don't know, because some people have some quirks that maybe rub you the wrong way, and it's just easier to stay around the people that you uh, you enjoy and uh, and you like there. Right. Well, I mean, as, so I finally, this guy's just, you know, he's getting at me, message me on Messenger all the time. I'm like, okay. I was like, let's go, dude. Let's go. Yeah. And, and we'd went a time or two before, but he was just persistent, just like wanting to go every weekend or any second I had available. Let's go. Let's go. Which, you know, normally my other buddies, I'd go, but I was just kind of just really didn't want to with him. But anyways, we go this night and uh the water had been up quite a bit at the river and it the water had receded i mean it was still up pretty good and the, the current was going pretty good uh, a little more than i like but we went down there anyway and we had to walk through these woods man down to get i mean there's usually a path through there because it's a park okay they usually keep it cleared out and it's like pea gravel and sand and stuff from uh from you know just the river and uh, but there's big logs debris all kinds of shit everywhere you know it's a pain in the ass to get through there we finally get back through there and it's muddier in hell once you get down by the river and so we're sitting there we you know get start cutting up bait get them hooked up put everything out in the water and we're sitting there kind of bullshitting a little bit and uh just next thing i start seeing little splashes down i don't know about a foot out maybe not even a foot out into the water at first they really think much of it and then i was just kind of like those are rocks you know i mean it, it wasn't wasn't little fish jumping or nothing like that yeah and i was you know i didn't really say nothing to my buddy i mean it, this has been a while ago so i may not get it exactly right the way i've told it before that's all right i have been i have been on other shows telling these stories Uh, but anyway these little rocks are hitting the water and stuff and that's why i told that my buddy there i was like hey dude so you see them rocks keep hitting the water he's like man them are shad little bait little bait fish that run up the river i was like dude i mean i've been i've been fishing down here for a long time that's not shad (laughs) <laughs> they don't they don't make splashes like that and uh, so we're we're sitting there and you know i kind of just let it go and the next thing i know i look up and this is where it gets kind of kind of crazy well and this is the perfect place to talk about it <laughs> exactly exactly so, we're all about crazy so, so i look up to the west sky the sun's already went down and there's three lights up in the sky and you know they're spaced out apart from each other a little bit so mm-hmm. it kind of i don't know there's just three dots in the sky they look kind of like stars just white lights okay. okay i look up and i'm like they're moving so they're going to the north the first one blinks out the second one and the third one they slide forward and another one appears behind it and they continuously keep doing that just going to the north the front one will blink out and then the next one will come back and there there's not always three because the first one will blink out yep. but a third one will reappear and they move forward and i was like i told that guy i was like dude i was like you see this shit? i was like those are freaking ufos dude and there's a big power plant there too yeah a big high uh, uh hydro plant and uh, you know it's on down past it though from where it's up in the sky and uh he's just like dude he's like i don't believe in any of that shit you know and, and he's a he's a a big christian feller goes to church yeah. every sunday and all that good stuff and, uh, and he's just like i don't believe in none of that stuff i was like it's right there dude look it's right it's right in front of you yeah yeah just exactly so you know I as i talked to you believe, and, 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 it's right in front of you you know, I always, well, I always thought it was kind of, it was three different things or, you know, and another one was appearing and one was disappearing. And one guy I talked to, he's like, well, did you ever think it was just one big object and it was spinning? That's what I, I was, like, was going to ask as well. 
And I was like, well, I was like, I never thought of that. So it's a possibility, but that was happening and the rocks were still hitting the water. So I start telling that guy, I said, dude, I said, there, I said, I'm getting fucked. Sorry, I ain't trying, trying not to cuss. I, I cuss nope. like a sailor. That's <laughs> right. It's all right. It's all right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, I still try not to when, you know, something like this. But uh, anyways, this. Uh, so we're, we're just sitting there, you know, watching our poles and, you know, and the the UFO thing, it, 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 it goes away. It's gone. Mm-hmm. Okay. But I'm like on high alert at this point i'm like tingly all over something ain't right so we're sitting there the rocks are hitting the water i mean it's probably i mean they're just little bitty splashes it's not like they're big ass rocks i mean they're they're probably like marble sized rock or pebbles being thrown into the river Mm -hmm. well we're sitting we're not sitting we're standing and I start hearing, it, it sounds like someone's like got a handful of small twigs or sticks and it's just like crunching them in their hand. Okay. Or maybe, or maybe even breaking them a little bit. And I was like, what the hell is that? And I like shining my light back here and stuff. And there ain't nothing back here. And then I see this blue light. It's back here. I mean, it looks almost like a, like a LED light. Okay. Okay. Well, it's coming down the trail. And I was like, dude, I was like, you see it back here? Because, I mean, immediately I was like, I knew it wasn't a flashlight. And it was moving way too fast for all the debris and everything. I mean, this is probably 50 yards, maybe a little further back behind us in the woods. Okay. And it's kind of up, uphill a little bit. But there's trees down everywhere where the floodwaters pushed them up. And they, yeah. they fell over from the floods. And there's debris everywhere and there's that sand and pea gravel back there once you get up past the mud this thing's moving pretty fast down through there like probably if you were jogging at a good yeah. pace that's about how quick it was moving down through there that's just a kind of a way i describe it for sure but, nope that's a great way but as i see it coming down there i was like it's not swaying side to side it's not it's just floating down through there and it's probably almost like a soccer ball size, maybe a little bit, probably a little bit smaller than a soccer ball. Mm-hmm. But it's like it's like a an LED light, kind of kind of like that 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 color, but a little bit more blue. Yep, yep. And it's just floating down through there. And I was like, dude, I was like, you see it? And he's like, yeah. He's like, I seen that a minute ago. He's like, I just thought somebody in a, a car coming down through there. I said, like, dude, there there ain't no cars coming down here. I mean, there's a big flood wall on the other side of it. It's a big dirt berm. It's got yep, grass yep. on it. They 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 keep it to keep the flood from flood water getting into the, the houses over there. Okay. So and when I go to look back, the damn thing went right back to where it started at again and it's coming back just like like it it started over from when i first seen it kind of like what you had seen up above uh those lights kind of like repeating kind of thing how they were running through a cycle and then repeating this thing seemed to be doing the same thing well say when i first seen it it's coming down through the woods at that good pace and i like almost immediately i'm like that how there ain't no way that's a person because i mean if you're carrying a flashlight it's gonna be banging around yeah and you know i'm already kind of tripping a little bit because the shit that's going on around us already (laughs) and and i've never seen any of these lights before never and it's it it comes down there and it's probably i mean it travels a couple hundred feet maybe by the time i turn to him and he tells me he thinks it's a car and i was like there ain't no way then i look back and it's right back at the beginning where it started and it does yeah. the same thing again. I was like, what the hell? Like, and, you know, it's kind of panicking a little bit, but not really. I don't know. It was just a, a weird, just well, weird it's situation. Really going bizarre. On. Very bizarre. Okay. So, it, I mean, at this point, 
And then I'm like, I look back down by my pole. It's in a pole because mm-hmm. I make I make my own pole holders out of rebar and pieces of pipe. And I'll stick them down in the mud and I'll stick my rod in it where they're sticking straight up. So when a catfish hits it, it just wham, it bends over and the hook sets itself. So you're not sitting there holding a pole forever, you know. And perfect, I can perfect. I can go mess around, do whatever I want. So the rocks are still hitting the water. And I'm like, you know, I, it's been a while since I've told this, talked about this, but I'm trying to just replay it as the best I can. <laughs> and, of course. And, you know, the, the scary part's what stands out the most. And, you know, it just keeps hitting me in the head right now while I'm trying to talk about it. I'm trying to keep the story going, keep it going quick enough. I can keep going. But anyways, as we're going, as we're, we're standing there with our poles, you know, and the rocks are hitting the water again. And I look, and that light's gone. Okay. It's nowhere to, it's gone. Don't see it again. I was sitting there talking to him. I was like, dude, there's, there's somebody throwing rocks or something throwing rocks at it. And I'm like, dude, I was like, I've listened to a lot of Bigfoot stuff. And I was like, I've experienced some weird shit before. And he's like, oh, Bigfoot ain't real. You know, all, you know, how uh, <laughs> typical non believer. I was like, what? I was like, I mean, I ain't saying it's real, but I mean, I mean, I don't know. I've I've listened to a lot of a lot of podcasts well, and stuff about this stuff, and I was like, "This is weird as shit." I mean, this is this is happening right now. Well, he just he just denied a UFO, even though it was right in front of him. You know, so I wouldn't really yes. uh, worry about his approval of, of what's <laughs> real and what's not. You know, it, right? Yeah. So I mean, it continues on. I don't know. I, maybe. I don't know. I don't know how long it was a little while longer. The rocks are still going, you know, I'm talking to him about Bigfoot and he's like, no, not having it. Don't believe in that shit. And then the next thing you know, dude, what it sounded like was like someone picked up a log back here and just smashed it against a tree. Wow. Boom. Big, like explosion sound. You hear like, I mean, like it exploded. Like you heard all the little pieces go flying through all the shit back there. I mean, this is only 40, 50 yards behind us at the furthest, probably not even that far. And I'll just look at him. I was like, dude, it is time to go. And he's like, (laughs) yeah, let's, he's like, let's get out of here. Yeah. So we start grabbing our poles cranking them in, fighting them against the current. You know, we got big old sinkers on there and all that good stuff to try to hold it down. Yeah. Fighting it to get it in. We get it in. But as I'm real mind it, those rocks that are hitting the water, they didn't, they're, they're still hitting the water. Okay. At, you know, I mean, you're like getting one every, I don't know, four or five seconds, maybe wow. 10 seconds at the most, if I remember right. And as I'm starting to reel mine, the rocks are getting bigger. Like, the splashes are getting bigger. I'm like, like just trying to get my shit in. I'm like, I'm get, just getting the hell out of here. I was like, forget this shit. We got our stuff, you know, throw our backpacks on, get our poles. And he's getting ready to just walk right up in the woods the way we came in. I was like, bro, I'm not going in the woods, dude. Did you just not hear that? <laughs> And he's like, whoa, that's, I was like, no, we're going to walk the long way down around the, the river bend there. And it goes down to, uh, it's a fossil bed down there. And this is right by the city of Louisville. I mean, this is okay. a big, it's a big city. I yeah. mean, they got skyscraper buildings down there. I mean, not big as California or nothing like that, but they, they got some big ass buildings down there. Yeah. And uh, once you get down to that corner, and it's a big flat rock out there and it's got fossils in it and all that stuff. But you can see the city once you get around that corner and it's all rock. Well, by the time we get up there, I stop at that corner and it's a rock wall right on the side of you. It's probably, I don't know, 15 to 20 feet above your head. And then there's trees and stuff on back behind it, but it's all rock. Okay. And as, uh, we get to that corner there. I stop 
and I just go to look back, dude. <laughs> it roared at us, dude. So freaking loud. My knees buck. I almost, almost hit the ground. I almost fell down. You know, my back, my backpack's pretty heavy. It's probably around, I mean, it's not super heavy, but I mean, it's around 50 pounds, 60 pounds, give or take what I got yeah. in it. And, and I mean, my, my, my legs just like buckled on me. I about fell to the ground. And I mean, you know, it's, it's like those guys say, you know, it sounds like the, you know, a lot of people say in their encounters when they roar, it, it sounds like a, uh, like an African lion when it just yep. makes that loud roar. And, uh, you know, I've told this story before and I mean, that's what I've, I went to. Cause I mean, that's the closest thing I can compare it to, but way louder. And, you know, I go to, uh, music festivals. They have a big one down in Louisville and it's all heavy metal stuff. Yep. And it's, uh, and I mean, the, the percussion or however you want to say it that, that came off of this roar. I mean, it just shook your whole body. I mean, I've never experienced anything like that in my life. And <laughs> I mean, I about shit my pants, dude. I mean, if I would, if I would have probably that's something and, and just, you know, just for our viewers and ever in our listeners, you know, that is something that happens. This is not like, Oh, I just hit my pants. Like a funny thing. No, no, this like, or just a, a just an expression. No, this happens. Like people, yeah. you know, release their, their bodily fluids, you know, cause it, it's just, well, huge. yeah, well, thankfully I didn't, but I'd say yeah. if I had, if I would have had any in there, it would have let go. Cause <laughs> I, I, it scared me to death, dude. Yeah. And I mean, I, I'm a, I've always been a hardcore fisherman. I mean, I go every chance I can go. I mean, I fish a lot more than a lot of people do. And, uh, yeah, it kind of screwed that up for me for a little while. I could imagine. I, mean, I definitely, I definitely didn't go back down to the river. Yeah. And, but anyway, as we, uh, that happened and that guy's like my, the guy that was with me, he's like, what the hell was that? And I was like, dude, I was like, that's a freaking Sasquatch, dude. I was like, I've listened to so much. I mean, we didn't see it. Yeah. Okay. I tell you, we, we didn't see it. But I mean, you, what the hell you else? Had, you had, yeah, you had just about every other experience other than just actually seeing it. You know, it's everything. The rocks being thrown. Um, yeah. UFO, I mean, orbs. You had it all. I mean, and we're at the, you know, we're at the, the state line between Kentucky and Indiana Kentucky's well known for all that, you know, creepy, yep. scary shit. And it is. It uh, is. And then I go on to, uh, you know, as we get back to, uh, we make it up out of there. Yeah. My dog just scared me to death. My wife must have let him out. <laughs> Perfect <laughs> I got timing. the window. Perfect timing. <laughs> I got the window down. I just had my hand hanging out and he just licked my finger. But anyways, he uh, <laughs> we made it up to the we made it back up to the truck. And uh, we get in the truck, get started up, you know, I'm getting that I'm getting out of there. Of course. And so we get on going up the road and I was just like once we get up to the exit and get back on the interstate going north, because I mean, this is 40 miles away from my house. Mm -hmm. We get going up the interstate there, and I was like, dude, I was like, what, what do you think? What do you think that was? And he's like, he's like, it was just person. Or uh, he said something, he said something like that. I said, like, yeah, dude, there is no way anybody could make a noise that freaking loud. It's not possible. Well, and he just wouldn't talk to me about it. And this was, I don't, I can't remember how many years it's been now. It's been a few years. And he just messaged me at the beginning of this week. It's the first time he's wow. met. I'm not friends with him on Facebook anymore. He, I guess he deleted me or something off of there because he wasn't on my friends anymore. Yeah. And just out of the blue, he messaged me. You been catching any fish? 
I said, no, I said, I haven't been going that much. Just, just it ain't been a good year for me. I said, some of my buddies have caught some big ones this year, but I said, I, I just didn't do good this year, which I mean, I ain't lying to him. I, I haven't caught no big ones this year or last year, 2023, which, you know, kind of leads on here to the next story. So me and him don't talk anymore. And. Well, I'm scared to go there. I'm not, I mean, I was going to say it. I was scared to go back to the river. I mean, I'm not like terrified to go, but I mean, I sure as hell ain't going to go down there by myself. Yeah. So I I just didn't want to go back to the river because that happened. So me and my buddy, Tim, that I mean, I'm super close with this dude. Yeah. He used to be married to one of my cousins. I mean, he's, I mean, he's, he's my dude, you know I mean? anything I need. I mean, he's there to help me and anything he needs, I'm there to help him. So we decide to go to this lake. I mean, it's only 10 miles or less from my house. It's down, you go down a long gravel road over all these big ridges up and down and down this big ass hill down in the bottoms and it's down a dead end road. You know, I was telling you earlier about the guy that's got the house with all the lights on it. Everything's lit up. Yep. So we go back here, park our car. Well, when as we're pulling in up the road there, we come around this little bend and they got a big, it's a guardrail, but it's made out of, uh, out of wood, like old railroad ties or something like that. Something okay. similar yeah. like that. Big, big pieces of wood. And, uh, He's like, dude, he's like, I just seen red eyes in the woods because we were running behind. We usually like to get down there, you know, an hour or so before it gets dark to get everything set up. So we're not, you know, messing around in the dark, Mm -hmm. you know, just getting set up initially. So uh, we get down there. It's dark. It's already dark. We're kind of bickering back and forth to each other because. If I remember right, it was his fault. He's always late anyway. And (laughs) so, you know, I, you know, I'm giving him shit, you know, it's, it's your fault. We got to do this in the dark or whatever. So he sees these red eyes. I was like, well, I didn't see him. And he's like, dude, I'm telling you, I've seen these red eyes. I'm like, why are you getting mad, dude? I'm like, I'm, I believe you. You seen fucking red eyes over there. I mean, I, (laughs) <laughs> you know, I, I didn't yeah. see him. So we pull on down to the little parking area. And he's all shining his light up there and stuff. And we get out. And I was like, I was like, well, I mean, I was like, were they down on the ground? Well, I mean, what? he's like, they were big. And I was like, well, I was like, well, I mean, I really don't even know any critters around here that have red eyes. Other than uh, pigs, maybe. I've heard people say pigs have red eyes. I don't know. I ain't ever spotlighted a pig. So, well, anyway, we get our stuff out of the car. We don't see nothing. He don't see no eye shine up there or nothing. So, we head on down to the the spot we fish at on the dam of the lake. We get set up. And I don't, again, I'm, I'm bad about this. I, I've been wanting to, like, sit down and write down all these stories and, like, try to, like, get them together where I could read them a little better <laughs> instead of... That's all right. That's well, that's actually because uh, but, because my 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 mind sometimes is like Swiss cheese. So I make a point yeah, of trying to write I'm, down my stories. And whenever I if I send a message to tell someone about something that has happened, I always save it and put it into a file where I have like okay, at least I have something, you know. Right. Well, that's, yeah. I mean, I'm I'm exactly that way. Yeah, I, and, and I am. I always get a little nervous when I start talking about this stuff a little bit my anxiety gets up a little bit i don't know why i just do but anyways uh we get down there and we get set up yeah we cut our bait up you know same same old story catfishing get our bait out in the water i don't remember at what point how long it took but you know you know like i told you i work in a quarry i'm a miner I've got these high, I mean, uh, they're LED headlamps. 
but I mean, I can, sh it shoots a beam on it. I mean, it, it'll go like, I can't even tell you how far, 400, 500 yards. I mean, it'll light it up. Yeah. I mean, they're bad. They're badass headlamps. They got them for us years ago. And yeah, I mean, they're, they're pretty cool. <laughs> well, we're down there and that's, we're sitting there, dude. And, and we're the only ones down there at that point. If I remember. Yeah. Yeah. We were the only ones there. Okay. And we, sh I shine that light back up. I don't know why I decided to shine probably just because he brought up the red eyes again or something. The reason why I turned the light on and shined it up or usually we'll just set in the dark until we catch a fish or something like that before we turn lights on. And, uh, <sighs> turn that freaking light on dude. <laughs> there it is. Standing wow. there. Really? Yeah. I mean, it was about 200 yards away, okay. give or take. Yep. But, I mean, it's your typical outline of, you know. <laughs> Bigfoot. <laughs> you Sasquatch. can say it. You can say it. Sasquatch, yeah. Bigfoot. Yeah. And, yeah. It's, it's pretty wild. And its eyes, it had that ambery red look orangish red looking color my buddy always says red mm -hmm. they kind of look more orangish orangish red like a kind of like the sunset okay just yeah, that, yeah. That, that amber amber red color amber orange color and it's a big dude i mean big dude i mean my youngest daughter is six years old and I mean, she's probably, I don't know. She's not four foot tall yet. And if I was up there standing next to that big feller, I'd look like her standing next to me. Wow. So, so at least, at least two, three feet higher than, uh, than you. Oh yeah. Yeah. Way bigger than me. So you, uh, you're, you're guessing maybe around nine foot or something like that. Maybe eight foot, nine foot. Well, we went up there to where the tree was, where he was at. We couldn't, we didn't have no reference of it. So, I mean, I can't really say, yeah. but I, if I would guess, I would just go with your, your typical, what, you know, people usually say eight foot. That's what they yeah. normally say. So I would just, I would go with that. But I mean, I can, I mean, right now I'm just, I can, it's burnt in my memory. What it what just, other things like what other details do you recall? So the eyes definitely the outline. Were you able to make out anything else? Well, I mean, we was pretty far from it, mm -hmm. but of it course, just stood there. It just stood there and stared at us. Jeez. It did not blink its eyes. It didn't. I mean, that light that I you know a lot of people. I mean, you know, I've heard so many encounters where they'll say they'll you know they'll pull their hand up, and put it in front of their face. Yeah. Or, yeah. or, you know, they'll even close their eyes. This feller did not do nothing. He just stood there like a statue. And uh, me and my buddy, we just standing there just like, I just in shock, you know, just what do we do? And, and we were catching fish. Yeah, I mean, we we were staying pretty busy. I mean, it was a it was a de pretty decent night. I mean, we we caught several channel cats. I mean, nothing huge, but but the whole idea of going down it we never we never go down there to fish for we don't fish for small fish anymore <laughs> like we did when we were young. You know, we go to the river to catch the big boys. But anyway, yeah, it, and it just stood there, and we just kept. And we take the light off of it and, you know, and shine it right back up there pretty quickly. Yeah. And he never moved. He stood there. Well, the next thing we know, here comes a car or a Jeep. I think it was a Jeep. Okay. A Jeep or a truck. It comes down there. Well, he's gone. Well, they back down the little boat ramp. And, you know, they're where the boat ramp is. They're kind of catty corn. He's straight on with us at this point. 
like if I'm looking at you right now, straight yeah. on, they're over here to the left of us just a little bit, about the same distance on okay. the other side of the lake. And it's just a asphalt boat ramp. It goes down and it's concrete down by the water. Yeah. Okay. So they just back their Jeep or truck down there. I can't remember exactly which one it was because there's another vehicle later on. Well, we're sitting there. We have our lights out. They're backing in. They can hear them hooting and hollering a little bit. You know, a lot of people around here, they're always drinking <laughs> and smoking pot, having a good old time doing the country thing. When we shine our light back up there, he's gone. Like, and I, I don't remember the conversation exactly, but, me, you know, I'm sure me and my buddies was like, dude, where'd he go? And I'm pretty sure my buddy went up on top of the, the dam there and shined down the bottom. You know, just making sure this, you know, big bastard didn't come creeping up on us. Yeah, for sure. Well, <laughs> I don't blame him. And which, you know, he's a lot braver than me at that kind of like that. But I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have went up there by myself. I, I, I don't, I know I didn't go up there with him. Uh, well, anyway, those people are hooting and hollering over there. They're obviously setting up to catfish. They come down late. I've seen people do it a hundred times. They'll, they'll show up at midnight, one o'clock in the morning. I'm like, what are you doing? I mean, it's about over with, you know, you're showing up. <laughs> okay. Well, anyway, there's, they start setting up. I, you, you can hear the poles, you know, you know, the sound of fishing poles, pulling them out of a Jeep or the back of yep. a bed of a truck. And uh, they're starting to get stuff going. And there's, they're, I, I, I don't know. It sounds like they're, you know, they're kind of not really arguing, but they're just like, like raising their tones of voice with each other. I mean, I don't know what's going on over there. And it's the next thing you know, man, they just, they're just throwing everything in the freaking car. And they freaking haul, I mean, spin, I can't remember if the first vehicle spin their tires or, I don't know, they was hauling ass out of there. Yeah. And me and my buddy's like, dude. There's a bit that big some bitches over. <laughs> he scared of me. He did something. Well, it wasn't just a few minutes or so after they left, shined the light, but he's back there again, looking really? straight at us. Yes. I mean, and his eyes are huge. I've never seen eyes that big. Yeah. Other there, there's one time I went out to the I used to spotlight for deer. I spotlighted this big as uh, a Texas longhorn. It was a humongous bull, huge. And he had some big old giant, like his eyes shine like blue looking, if I remember right. But I mean, that's, I mean, his eyes, that was humongous. Big, big eyes. I mean, just wide eyed. Like, I mean, he's looking at us like he's scared, you know, just, Big yep. white eyes. <laughs> okay, so I mean, my buddy's like, I mean, I mean, we're just kind of lost for words. I mean, I don't know. What are, what are we gonna do? I mean, this thing is huge. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And and I don't know how much longer it was. Thirty minutes, an hour. I, I don't remember now. I wish I'd have. I wish I would have really wrote all this stuff down as it happened in the time or shortly after. Well, we, uh, we're sitting there. Well, here comes another vehicle. It's a different vehicle. Like I said, I'm, I'm pretty sure one of them was a Jeep and one of them was a truck. And they do the exact same thing. They back down to the boat ramp. They start getting their stuff out. You can hear their poles rattling around. They lean them up against the vehicle. I mean, they're a good distance away, but I mean, you can still hear it. We're down in a big valley, like a big hauler kind of like, and this is a big, it's a pretty big lake. I mean, it's not ginormous. I mean, you can see yeah. pretty much the whole thing, but I mean, it's, it's a big lake. I don't remember how many acres it is, but uh I'd say probably a little less than 50 or so, but I mean, it's a pretty big body of water. 
and it's just a big giant ridge line. I'll, I'll have to go down there and take pictures of it and send them to you. Definitely. Definitely. And I'll, uh, yeah, but the same thing happens again. These people start getting their stuff out and stuff. Next thing you know, I mean, they're scrambling around, slamming doors and shit, hauling ass out the out of there. <laughs> We're just like, oh my god, dude. But say he, you know, he disappeared the same time, you know, same thing. They come down the road, he's gone. Scares them off. And he's back you. again. He's back again. And I mean, it, it's getting pretty late at this point. And I think we go maybe another 30 minutes, an hour pass at the most. I, I don't remember exactly. Yeah. And we're just like, dude, we start, we start reeling our stuff up, you know, and still shine the light up there occasionally. Yeah. And if I, rem I remember it right, you know, he's still there reeling up getting our poles in and stuff and then the next thing you know he's gone hmm. so that, that, that's even off. scarier when he's gone because you don't know but, where he's at but we get to that point and uh this that's just where we we got really scared the both of us because back then i mean this i mean this was just a couple years ago we we usually didn't take pistols with uh, occasionally we would but I mean, now I, I bring my 45 with me everywhere I go. <laughs> Don't blame you. And, Don't blame you. And, you know, they changed the law here and stuff in Indiana. You don't have to have a, a permit anymore. Okay. So uh, you, you can open carry, conceal carry or whatever, as long as you're not a convicted felon of a violent crime or have any mental illnesses. Okay. So, I mean, I think I'm okay. Yeah. I'm not a criminal anyway. <laughs> 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 but uh so yeah I, I i carry out with not that it would do you any justice from you know hearing stories of people talking about you know coming down to the point where you know they're they're 20 feet away from them with their shotgun deer hunting and you know they they, they can't even bring themselves to pull the gun up to pull the trigger yeah or they have shot them and you know it, it don't it don't do nothing. They don't do it. Yeah, uh, it doesn't do anything. Well, the, or they just run away, or or you know, yeah. or even the the weirder things. You know, they just disappear. Yep. yep. <laughs> Which, behind you know, a tree, I they, they I, walk I, behind I, a, They walk behind a tree and yeah. they vanish. Well, I don't doubt any of it. You know, I've listened to yeah. so many stories and stuff. You know, I haven't experienced like the weirdest woo part of it that, you know, I have experienced was that, that blue light that was going the through light. the woods at one time. Yeah. But you no, know, that's the one down there at the lake that I was just telling you about. That's, that's the only one I've actually put eyes on. And, uh, you know, at 200 yards, I was pretty scared. Uh, of course, of course. And, and when and, you guys packed up, when you guys packed up, did anything else happen after that point? <sighs> Thank God, no. Okay, good, good. Well, I mean, that's why I was, whenever I got to that point when I ended the story there, I was, uh, or the encounter, you know, a lot of yeah. people don't like you to say stories. But yeah. It is what it is. It is what it is. <laughs> exactly, exactly. I, I, uh, I know they said experience or encounter. Uh, I, I like story. I like calling it a story, even though I know it's the truth. You know, I don't, I don't mean to diminish anybody's yeah. experience, but I like calling it a story. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I'm not getting nowhere by, I mean, you're not paying me no money to, to yeah. tell you a story here. <laughs> I mean, it ain't getting me nowhere. I'm just telling you what, what's happened to me. You know, I like to talk about it to people that, yeah. that don't actually look at me and say, you are freaking crazy, dude. <laughs> or they just look at you like you, you know, you're a dumbass or something. Yeah. I mean, I'm no, not, I, I'm I, not a dumb, I may not be the smartest man, but I, I mean, I'm, I'm not a dumbass. <laughs> but, uh, you know, the, more and more, and, you know, but I don't care either. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think you get to an age where you're just like, I don't, I don't care anymore. You know, I don't care. I don't care yeah, what I you don't. believe because I know what I saw or I know what I experienced or, you know, right. I know what I heard. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, we packed up and we kind of, Real slowly, 
worked our way because we had to walk straight towards him where oh, he was shit. at. Yes. Okay. Because okay. it was it was straight down the dam, and then just around the corner of the dam to the left was the parking lot where oh, you know it's got parking spots for boat trailers with a truck and you know. Yeah, I'm yep. one of those guys that park uh, that will park in your boat your spot for your boat trailer. <laughs> Cuz I don't yeah, care. Yeah, but, but it's late at night. It's late at night. She's uh, <laughs> Yeah, there weren't there weren't nobody there. Exactly. But, yeah, and there was plenty of spaces. Yeah, it is what. But anyways, yep. yeah. We uh we got back here down to that corner. I mean, we was r- running our lights back and forth. I mean, you'd have thought we was police down there looking for somebody. Cause I, we were scared. Yep. I didn't really, I mean, yeah. Wow. Yeah. It was the, uh, Jacob. Those, those, uh, <laughs> those experiences are, are phenomenal. You know, like I, I know we're, we're running out of our, of our time here. Um, not that we're going to get into any stories, but have you had any other experiences after this or anything else, uh, happen? Yeah. Yeah, actually, it was uh, at the same place. Well, okay. my buddy, I'll go, I'll go real fast with this, since you know we're, we're running out of time. Well, here. we can always, uh, we can always, sw- we can always have you back too. But if you want to take your time talking about it, or if it's a short one, it's up to you. I'll leave that up to you. Well, it was my my buddy Tim, the one I yep. was telling you about here. I had this. We we seen it. Yeah. Him and his son was down there. They were on the other side of the lake just uh trying to catch some bluegill because we's gonna go down the river and uh my buddy tim is an idiot (laughs) so he likes to 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 make fun of them a little bit before this happened he'd like to stand out he'd go whoo just making big stupid sounds like that yeah and he he would uh well he did this well, straight yeah. across the lake on the other side, it's like a big old giant hillside. It's all woods. You can't even see on the other side. It's just all green at this time of year, the time that they were there. And uh, he said it, he said something starts stomping around over there, breaking shit, comes storming around the whole side of the lake. And I mean, it came around pretty, cl- pretty quick. We've walked it before and it, it's, it, it takes us about 20 minutes, maybe a little longer than that, 30 minutes to get to that point. Yep. Even if you ran, you still couldn't get there that quick as being a human. So they hear this thing come around like he said, it sounded like uh, a rhinoceros is what he said. I'm pretty, yeah, that's what he said. Okay. So it's like, like a rhino just tearing through the woods over, gets around the other side of him. And they're just sitting there. Nothing happens. And then they hear sound like, you know, kind of like uh, the props of a helicopter, kind of like the. It's a big ass stick comes flying out of the woods and lands right behind them in the grass. Wow. So wow. they yank their poles up real quick, reel them in and throw them in the car. And they got the hell out of there. <laughs> well, and this ain't it. Just last summer. We like to go down to the spillway of this lake and I'll catch a uh, big chub minnows down there and little baby bluegills and stuff like that. And we use them for catfish bait. So I take, uh, one of my daughters with me, one of my younger ones. She's, uh, she's 10 years old now. And, uh, she come with me and Tim came down there. And then one of my other buddies come down there. I won't say his name. He says he don't doubt it, but he says he uh, he don't really believe. <laughs> he said it could be, but, you know, he's not seen enough evidence of it or, or whatever. But anyways, we're down there catching some bait. And we're we're just catching, catching them like crazy down there. We're filling a bucket up, got some ice in there, and uh, I'll vacuum seal them and throw them in the freezer, save okay. them for later. Yeah that's what we were doing. We weren't going fishing that night. We were just catching them to put in the freezer. Well, we're down there and I'm just, we're just bullshitting, catching bait. My daughter's just doing her own thing. And over to the other side, it's just a big hole in the ground where the pipe comes out and the the water pours out. It's dug out a big hole. And, uh, 
on the other side of it, I don't know if it was just like a little barn or a little shack or something. It's old as hell and it's all fell falling in. It's, it's, it's falling apart. Well, my daughter comes, she walks over to me and she says, dad, I seen a big shadow over there. And I just immediately, my blood kind of went cold on me a little bit. And I was like, son of a bitch. Jeez. Well, I just reel in my pole. Yep. And uh, I said, well, let's get the hell out of here. And I, cause I, I mean, I ain't going to take no chances. You know, my daughter says she's seen a big shadow. It's not even dark yet. You know, yep. I mean, we're catching, we're catching bait. We're not, it's not dark. And so she sees a big shadow move over by that little building and it's all falling down. It's got poison ivy and vines and shit growing all over it. And uh, so me and her start walking up the hillside and I didn't even say nothing to the guys. I was like, we're getting out of here. Yeah. I mean, I, I mean, that's about, about all I said, you know, and I'm getting my daughter out of there. So we're, we're course, heading up as, the side as a father. Of, and I understand completely. And we're heading up the side of the dam, getting up to the top. Uh, Cause it's flat up there, but I mean, it's, mm -hmm. it's pretty, pretty damn steep. And you know, I'm a little fat. So, I mean, it's, <laughs> it's a, it's a bit, a little bit of a workout. Yeah. So I, we get up there, you know, I look back, you know, and here comes my buddy, Tim and my other buddy. And they're coming up when I get up at the top, you know, I kind of stop, let them catch up and I catch it out of the corner of my eye. And it, 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 there's a big, big line of saplings and uh, brush down through there you know trees probably 15 15 20 feet tall and they're probably you know like big rounds of baseball at the biggest maybe a few bigger ones not nothing major it's just a line between a a, a cornfield and you know they swap out fields they do soybean one year corn the next year well it's a big long line down through there and then they they keep the dam cut with brush hog and I see this, I mean, it's a, a man-like figure and it's a black, just solid black. I mean, like the, the background behind you in the screen is black as black as, you know. Wow. <laughs> and I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> I start to, you know, like start panicking inside a little bit. And I just like, I, I can't remember if I grabbed my daughter's hand or what. And I'm just like let's go let's you know yeah, we keep need to going move. and as I, lo I look back at my buddy tim and my other buddy and just seeing what you know how close they are they're up behind us we're up ahead of them a little bit and i look over again and i mean it's going with us but it don't look like it's moving like it's it don't look like it's walking or any i mean it just looks like it's just floating like, like it's gliding along well, I mean, it's like, I mean, I'm not seeing no arm movement yeah. or nothing yeah. like, I, I mean, I'm just seeing this black shape. Yeah. Like, like the cutout of a, yeah. of like a big man or something like that. Yeah. And, you know, I really didn't, I was just, I just wanted to get my daughter out of there. I didn't look at mm -hmm. it a whole bunch, but I mean, it's a, it's a long walk down that dam. I mean, to get to the corner around back to that parking lot. I mean, from that point, is i mean it's probably a hundred yards or a little further okay and uh as we get i mean it's still there as we get all the way up there to the i mean it's I mean it's like it's just floating on an escalator or something you know or like those those things you see in the, the airports that you stand on yeah, or yeah, the, walk like on the, to make you go moving, faster moving sidewalks yeah and, but, uh, and how big <coughs> how like you said it's a large man but are, were you able to like guess like you know like was it Sasquatch size or was it like Arnold Schwarzenegger or, or something like that? You know? Yeah, it was definitely bigger than it. It wasn't a man. There ain't no way. I mean, it was just huge. <clears throat> well, as we get back down to the car or we get down to the corner, there's a deer and it's out there in that field and it's just frozen in spot in, in, in the field. Okay. And uh, it don't do nothing. And usually, you know, people come walking up. I mean, they spook off. Yeah, of course. Of course. So I kind of stopped there and I looked down and I, I don't see the, the, the figure anymore. Yeah. 
where did, where'd it go? I don't, don't didn't see it. And then I said something to Tim. I was like, I was like, did you see that? He's like, yeah. He's like, let's go. I was like, there's a deer right there. And we're like, hey, you know, clap our hands at it and stuff. And it just stood there like it was stuck. Mm -hmm. And then out of nowhere, it just busts off and takes off. Yeah, yeah. I thought that was kind of weird. I mean, who knows? It's just, I mean, that's how it went. And we went on down to our cars and we left. Got the hell out of there. I have a question here about that. Just a just a thought. Do you if that shadow man disappeared? Do you think it could have been the deer? Do you think it could have swapped into the deer somehow, like changed into the deer, or was the deer just fixated on no. that it saw this? I, I no, I don't think that. I really don't. No, I don't. No, no, even, no. I don't think that's a possibility. I really don't. I mean, nope. I mean, I guess it could have, but I mean, I really. I. I None of us I know. In, in reality, like you know, yeah, that I, comment. I, I don't know either. So it's a. Uh, it, it, yeah, just I mean, I've yeah. heard the the wind, uh, you know, Wendigo thing, stuff like yeah. that. You know, shapeshifters, shapeshifters. stuff. I mean, I've heard I've heard stories that. Thank God, I've never experienced that. But. <laughs> Yet. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, it, before my my little brother passed away when he was younger, he. Uh, he was deer hunting up on our grandparents' property, and, uh, and I think that's I think that's what he's seen. I always thought it was a skinwalker thing. You know, I've heard stories about that, and then, yep. well, well, not a Wendigo. That's not what I'm thinking. I'm thinking more the 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 rake like creature. Oh, People talk about okay. the rakes. Yes, yes. Because yeah, you know, he came to me. You know, he was probably. I don't know, probably 16, 17 at that time. And I was, you know, probably closer to 21, 22, something like that. And uh, he's like, man, he's like, I seen this deer come walking out of the woods, but he's like, it didn't have no hair on it. He's like, it looked like a pig, like the, the, color, the skin color of a pig. But he's like, it had hands on its feet. And he said its head was hanging down. And he said it was just, jerking its head back and forth and it just walked straight across the field he's like i drew my gun up on it but he's like i was scared to shoot it he's like and i just you know back then i didn't i didn't know you know and you know i kind of thought about it because i you know like i had told you before about you know the bad things i got into and as a teenager yeah. and yeah. satanism and uh getting into spiritual things that really took me in a bad direction as a young man, <laughs> which hopefully maybe you'll have me back. You know, uh, people, yeah, if I, people, I, people put up with me this long and you know, I mean, I know I sound like a dumb old redneck. Well, let's, let, let's not get rid of, okay. So <laughs> let's put a stop on this one right now because this has been fantastic. You know, you have a lot of experiences and you know, you had said, uh, oh, yeah. I, I think you're having experiences in your house right now. You know, like this is something we could, uh, or, well, or not, least... not inside. <laughs> not inside. Okay. Okay. No, no. So let's, okay. So we're going to circle back to this. So we're going to, we're going to have definitely have you back, whether it be on a live or something like that. Uh, Jacob, we're definitely going to have you back because you have a lot of stories to, you have a lot of stories to tell the world and, uh, you know, I want to help you do that. Oh yeah. Yeah, I mean, I appreciate it, man. I mean, you know, I liked your your other show with your buddy there. And, yeah, and, yeah, it was good. You know, it was good. I mean, Tom's great I'll, guy. Yeah, yeah, and he's the one. He's the metalhead, right? He's the metalhead. Yeah, he is. Uh, yeah, he started his right. own. Uh, yeah. It's called the the Eye of Jupiter. Oh, I have to check it out. I guess, but yeah, I mean, I appreciate you having me on, man. You know, it means a lot. I mean, I, I've For told sure. these stories before. You know, hopefully, people. Uh, you know, other people want to hear the rest of my stories uh, along. Uh, uh, I, I you, do. You, you know, I've <laughs> got UFO stuff, possibly maybe abduct, abduction. Maybe. I don't I don't really know. I got some weird stuff and, yep. you know, a lot of par a lot of paranormal stuff that that scared me to death over the years. And, uh, you know, I've, I've gave myself to Christ now. And, Perfect. You know, I'm, I'm I feel a lot better about things now. That is good. I mean, we, is good. we can talk about, I mean, I've got a lot of, 
a lot of time to put on your little videos here, buddy. <laughs> excellent. Excellent, Jacob. We're definitely going to have you back. Uh, you know, part two. We're going to, you know, Jacob Ruckman, right part two, coming up in the near future. Right on, Ra. All right, Jacob. Right on, you buddy. have yourself a great evening. And again, thank you for stepping in and filling this void that we had here today when uh, um, my previous guest, uh, uh, he actually messaged me while we're doing this interview. He apologized. Uh, he, his family all was sick, and he said, I totally forgot. Yeah. So. It happens. It yeah, happens. I mean, yep, shit happens. Exactly. <laughs> All right, Jacob, have a great evening and make sure to just wait around just for a little bit, okay? Yep. All righty. Thanks, buddy. See ya. See ya. All right, everyone. That was Jacob. And uh, how did you, like, his stories were, were amazing. You know, it just, it slowly grew and grew and just escalated into this craziness, you know, this bizarre encounters that he's had uh you know that i i was really fascinated by the his first well the first kind of bigfoot ufo orb encounter that that had just everything other than actually seeing the bigfoot uh but that one for me was uh was maybe my uh my favorite of his uh and you know we're gonna have him back i think it's gonna be great he's he's got a ton of more stories and i hope you guys are going to enjoy this so we're going to just take care of some um, the usual. We're going to take care of some uh, housekeeping. Click that like. Yeah. If you're new here, subscribe and have the bell hit for notifications to stay up to date on all the new content. Okay. And until next time, keep your curiosities wandering and always keep the light lit. I look forward to our next adventure together as we navigate the mysteries that lie ahead. Until our paths cross again, keep your curiosity wandering and ensure the light remains lit. Its veins are made of radio waves, blood cells made of cellular beeps, and a heart that pumps just to sell you its beats. And with this body asleep, it's the American dream, mongering on the accounts of those counting their sheep. A gold fountain of fleets imposed mountains that mount foes as founders of peace. So this hour, it's the sound of the wolves that's fully accepted when it's preached. And we're seeing it reach, eating away everybody at feast. Stomach, what this means in the belly. Of I don't mean to preach a story that you heard before, but y'all know it's a hard knock life. For all my people who don't got nobody else, this song gon' let you know that you're alright. Cause I'll be honest, I don't bother feeling hurt and nervous. It's harder to clean up when you done dirt on dirt. We got devices to connect up with this first on purpose, but ain't nothing working. With the planet divided, the hands that incited the cancer can't manage to hide it We can't stand for the rise, but can't stand to be quiet We can't stand, lest the son of man standing beside his Messiah's alive And the fire can't damage his choir You can't trample the highest, you can't bandage his highness He died for us already, you can't kill him who's risen You can't steal what he's given, he's standing right beside us I speak in opposition to the madness 
I'm not afraid of the plagues that are tactics Christ said I should pay with their taxes But I will never be a slave to the axis To the axis I will not bow I will glance to the heavens where my God's found Since he walks on water I will not drown And won't be afraid to speak in the belly of I the beast I don't mean to preach a story that you heard before But y'all know it's a hard knock life For all my people who don't got nobody else So I'm gonna let you know that you're alright Cause I'll be honest, I don't bother feeling hurt and nervous It's harder to clean up when you done dirt on dirt We got devices to connect up with disperse on purpose But ain't nothing working In the belly of the Gotta keep keeping 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 Gotta keep keeping